They shrunk until they fell apart. One by one, the members of Donald Trump's business councils turned against the U.S. president. The first to say he would no longer advise Trump on how to boost American business was Tesla CEO Elon Musk. He resigned in June over Trump's withdrawal from the Paris Climate Agreement. Over the weekend, a white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, led to violent clashes between white nationalists and counter-protesters. One anti-racism demonstrator was killed. Trump's failure to clearly condemn the white supremacists led to resignations of executives from Merck, Under Armour, and Intel. And Trump's statement on Tuesday, blaming both sides of the protest, sparked a political firestorm. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. You had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. His remarks led to five more resignations from his advisory panels, including the CEOs of General Electric and Campbell's Soup. With only 17 of the original 28 advisors left, Trump announced the shutdown of the councils in a Twitter statement saying, rather than putting pressure on the business people of the manufacturing council and strategy and policy forum, I'm ending both. Thank you all. At the same time, Apple CEO Tim Cook, who wasn't a member of the councils, criticized the president in an email to Apple employees. He wrote, I disagree with the president and others who believe that there is a moral equivalence between white supremacists and Nazis and those who oppose them by standing up for human rights. Along with Apple, tech companies such as Facebook and Twitter shut down accounts related to white nationalists. Markets generally shrugged off the news to disband the councils, but the dollar fell against six major currencies, including the euro and yen, a sign that investors are more confident in the CEOs running America's longest corporations than in Trump himself. Summer Hunter, TRT World. Joining us now is TRT World editor at large, Craig Capitas. Craig, uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming on the show. Big business appears to be taking the lead in its approach in dealing with the hatred we've seen. Uh, how much more of a role can it play in all of this? And are we seeing the type of leadership expected of someone holding Trump's office? Well, we're not seeing the leadership. You know, the uh, former American president, Calvin Coolidge, said the business of America is business. And that was the mantra for decades. That changed. You know, companies are quick to get in bed with politicians when it serves their interests and are quick to run away when it doesn't. What we've seen here is kind of a half profile in courage uh, on the part of corporate America. Look, few corporate titans ever walk away from a presidential council, no matter how silly it, the council might be, and they never walk away en masse. And the question is, why is this important? It's important because we're dealing with Nazis. Make no mistake about it. Now, the other significance here is you have to go back into history. Adolf Hitler said that the most sensitive part of a man is not his skin, but his wallet. And German industry sigheiled that and made a fortune off of fascism. Now, what America's business leaders did yesterday is say no to that. Now, Trump, they said, might have some fine ideas to regenerate the American economy, but not at the cost of the republic itself. This is a moral high ground, totally moral high ground. You're looking at, uh, you know, uh, 418,000 Americans died fighting fascism in World War II, a sensitive issue. Just how damaging is this going to be? We're seeing a president at odds with corporate America. Surely this doesn't work into the narrative of making America great again. No, it, it, it doesn't work. You know, how quickly these uh, businessmen left without, by the way, Trump's much vaunted uh, evangelical counsel. They haven't said a word. The thing to remember about Trump is everyone thinks he's a businessman, a corporate leader. He is not. Donald Trump is a failed casino owner and former game show host on NBC. Trump's corporation isn't even a co wasn't even a corporation it was a privately held unit he had no shareholders to answer to no one told him what to do and when you're the president of the united states you have to listen to what your advisors are telling you and trump clearly doesn't do that when he goes on national television and says that the nazis had permits to march that sent a shockwave through America because you know what? The Nazis always have papers, don't they? That's the first thing they ask. I can tell you my French family here who lived through World War II, some of the elder people, they were shocked by hearing 
what the President of the United States said yesterday. One of my relatives said, your country, America, has turned into a freak show. What should he be doing to regain confidence, or has, in your opinion, that <coughs> ship already sailed? <laughs> Oh, that ship has already sailed and sunk. I don't see it happening. Uh, there, there, what will either happen here is one of two things. The Republican Party and the people in the White House will trigger the 25th Amendment and try and get them out on incompetence. And in the 2018 elections, if the Republicans retake the House, the first thing on, or I'm sorry, the Democrats retake the House, the first thing on the agenda is going to be impeachment. Look, Trump's economic plans. There's a lot of solid stuff in them. But that's Republican boilerplate. Trump is not a Republican. He's a wild card. And what he has done over the past few days is link himself to Nazis. America doesn't do Nazis. And I take it you anticipate that this relationship with corporate America and the president will continue to deteriorate in the coming weeks and months. Oh, absolutely. Trump has to come through on his, or try to come through on his tax cuts and all, and, and all of the other economic, you know, engines he wants to build and, and, and restart in America. But the corporations don't need Donald Trump. Look, do, it was the corporate leaders who left these, left the council yesterday. And the moment they left, Trump sent out a tweet and said, oh, no, they didn't leave. I fired them all. I've, I've gotten rid of the council. That's a lie. They left. Corporate America left. That was TRT World Editor-at-Large, Craig Capitas, live for us from Paris.